Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm Eugene Edwards. Today we're diving into Jumpin' Jack Flash by the Rolling Stones. We're covering the riff, the tunings, and the tones, and we have multiple, multiple gear giveaways for you guys, so make sure to stick around. Helping us with today's deep dive is our trusty diving guide, Brian Whelan. Brian, say hello, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me, Eugene. <laughs> yeah, man. Great to have you back. Uh, when I see you, I know it means we're going to dive into a tune, and it's always, always a great chance to chat with you. Also, we're being joined by the one, the only, thank goodness, Dr. Dylan Calajuri. Good day. Good Look day, everyone. Good Look day, Brian. Look at this guy. Is yes. there a doctor in the house? Uh, is there, <laughs> the doctor is in. Uh, now, listen, Brian is a guitarist who's worked with artists like Chris Shiflett, Dwight Yoakam, Jim Lauderdale, and most recently, Post Malone. Uh, tell us what you're playing today, Brian. What you got there? Okay, this is pretty cool. This is one of these Squire Classic Vibe series, and I've had this guitar for about a decade. I would, you were buying up a cut. You bought up a couple of them at wow. the time, if I remember. I have I have three or four of these, but this is the <laughs> this is the uh, first or second year that they were being made. Now, and I could really quickly. Um, most of the electronics, everything electronic, has been replaced except for the neck pickup. Um, and then I also installed a bone nut instead of a plastic mm -hmm. one and then stripped all the lacquer off of the neck here. You can see. Aces, yeah. So I've tinkered with this one a, a great deal, but it, I mean, right off the rack, the neck felt good in my hand, which is really what you're, which is what, you know, it's what you're looking for. Can so we hear it guitar. for some kind of key thread? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Or how about this? <laughs> Make me happy. Yes, yeah, extra spank. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's great. And there. what what uh, what kind of amp setting you have on the GTX, real quickly? Because uh, people are going to probably the, ask. This is the Blues Junior setting, and it's been tweaked very little off of uh, just the way it the way it comes out of the box. Cool. And I just thought right. it, I thought it sounded kind of like. Uh, Kind of like Keith Richards. <laughs> so it is, I just it's went pretty with it. Keith for sure. <laughs> and Dylan, what do you have there? You're playing a bass. What's going on? Yeah, very cool. I, I'm playing an, um, an Ampro 2 J bass, jazz bass, uh, that's uh, it's roasted pine. Ro I won't have my pine any other way, only roasted. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And when you play that, I can smell the roast. You can pine. smell, That's yeah. Right. It's, it's kind of like yeah. coffee, but yeah, it's not like a, at all. Like a coffee yeah. incense sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. There it is. That's it. There, yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to uh, listen to everyone, oh, now I'm playing the Paramount of the Fender of Paramount Acoustic uh, with a fresh battery. I'm also tuned to an open E tuning, but actually half a step down. So it's an open E flat tuning, believe it or not. See? And I have a lot of compression and gain on this to kind of mimic what Keith has at the beginning of our record um so which uh, we should just start that uh, if you want to learn how to, step by step how to play jumping jack flash check out the link in the description to learn on fender play it's completely free to sign up uh also drop your questions in the comments as they come let's jump in brian can we hear a little bit of jumping jack flash in action oh buddy? yeah watch all you. right <laughs> That's great. That was that's good. Great. That's that great. That tone was like right on. That tone yeah. was great. And that, there, that, ro there. that rock so much, your camera was shaking. Oh, wow. wow. That's, that's, yeah, that's, no, that's pretty hip, man. That's, it was like a house over here. Yeah, it's like earthquake footage. Well, cool. These, um, okay, so let's. These Mustang <laughs> amps are really cool. I mean, like, I, like <laughs> I said, I did, not, I did not do very much to this at all. I, I found one that sounded kind of like it and then very minimal tweaks, some of which were requested by our production staff. Oh, cool. So this, this is mainly just what is coming out of the box when you click on the blues junior setting. So it's very cool. Good to know. Okay. So let's yeah. break this, this thing down into three parts, I guess. We'll start with the iconic riff. So mm. let's, uh, Brian, uh, just walk us through Keith's tuning and what's going on there. Okay. Um, it's not very hard to play once you have the tuning. And so, and I've done this in the, in the actual traditional way, which is removing 
uh, the bottom string, the low E string. And then I've tuned down my A string a whole step to G. And I've tuned down my high E string a whole step to D. Um, I'm capoed, so I am now in B flat as opposed to G. But if the capo wasn't on, it would be an open G chord. It, the strings would go in this order, G, D, G, B, D, mm. uh, from, from low to high. And that's an open chord. All of those notes are in a G major chord. Um, and so when you do that, you're able to strum the guitar and not fret it and create a chord. Um, and this basically allows you to create different um, different versions of the chords, different voicings, if you will, of, of the chord. And in particular, this is one that Keith Richards liked a lot. Yeah. And, and what this is, is you're going, you go from an open chord to uh, second fret D and first fret B. And it creates a suspended chord of sorts. It's a, it's a four chord. It's a C chord in that's inverted. Mm. The G in the bass and then this nine in it as well or a, a two, whatever, however you want to think of it. And it's a very difficult chord to make in standard tuning. It, right. it can be done with an A chord. Uh, right. If you are, uh, ex you know, have a lot of dexterity, you can do it, but it's much easier to to do it this way. And we should talk about why we have it capoed at the third fret. Now, on the site, we teach the song in B flat. Now, right. if you listen to the record, it's kind of in between the cracks. It's a tweener. It's, it's, a, it's they a tweener. May, they may have it was analog tape. They may have slowed the tape down, yeah. or they or like Brian, you're saying they would just tune to a, a nearby harmonica sometimes because it's not I like mean, they they had a very chaotic way of of <laughs> making their music, and there were any number of things that could have happened the tape itself could have been compromised mm. the tape machine could have been compromised they would tune to an out of tune piano or yeah. to a harmonica so they weren't exactly uh, i mean this is not hooked up to a click track this is not an a440 this is right. like an outer space right now so the, <laughs> if you see this if you see the zones now they essentially do, do it in b and a capo would be at the fourth fret we just want to get that out there and um and then uh, also in the the beginning the first thing we hear is actually well actually according to his memoir keith says he uses all acoustic guitars on this Take it. I, I don't know. Take but, that with a large grain of salt. That, <laughs> yeah. At, le at uh, least one or two of them sound very, very much like electrics. He loved to plug his electric into um, a little tape recorder mm -hmm. and blow it up. The sound so, of that tape recorder being blown up is and he something did he that, really liked. Yeah, and he did that with his acoustic and got this right. really compressed. There's actually gain on it, and that's the first thing you hear that. That. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really squeezed. I guess I should, I should clarify that the tape machine had like a microphone on it. Right, I'm sorry. Mm. So like an old-fashioned tape machine, you know, there was a microphone on it. So he just sat in front of it and played his acoustic, mm -hmm. and he overloaded the tape machine, and he really liked that sound. You can also hear it on Street Fighting Man. So if right. you got a micro cassette recorder at home, you could do the same thing. Probably. It's harder yeah. to do nowadays. but uh, That's right. So uh, I'm going to switch out of this and go to a standard tune electric guitar. Meanwhile, continue talking about the tones, and then we'll move into the verse, Brian. I can talk about the tone a little bit. I also wanted to just say, you know, where Keith Richards got this idea was a guitar player named Ry Cooter, uh, who himself had learned about it from country blues artists from places like northern Mississippi, where mm. they have the, the hill country, and it's a very specific style of blues that is often tuned to an open chord and you know, played like... And a lot of this... Or, uh, so a lot of those kind of sounds were kind of endemic to that to that style mm -hmm. of music. Ry Cooter learned about it. He actually auditioned for the band when Brian Jones was fired, and they recorded his audition, which went on for several days, and used it to basically reinvent their entire career. Wow. Keith Richards, you know, took this tuning and used it to write um, "Tumbling Dice," "Street Fighting Man," "Jumping Jack Flash," "Honky Tonk Women." On yeah. and on and on and it re on. It restarts their career with that. And it yeah. restarts their career. We, we, Gene and I's, uh, uh, or my former boss, Dwight Yoakam, used to say, without this tuning, uh, <laughs> they're, the, they're the animals. Yeah, yeah it's they're over, like a, right. a blues, a British blues band that at the end of the 60s <laughs> just kind of goes away. Right. Wow. Now, we have a, now, can someone just learning this song play the riff in standard tuning? The, the answer is yes. And I would, yeah. uh, you know, I, I would be down here at this B flat here and. So it's kind of a first position riff. That's in B flat if you're doing it in B. 
So there, there is a way to do it. Absolutely. Let's let's move on to the verse, Brian. Uh, uh, can we hear the, just the verse again? And then talk about what's happening there. The, the verse is just the riff with lyrics over it. I was born. Oh, sorry, what key am I in? Sorry. I was born. Because I heard the I'm going to start that again. It's terrible. I was born. In a cross by a hurricane. It's the same riff. It's just, you know, now Mick is singing over it. And, and I, what, what jumps out to me here is that there's no strumming of chords throughout this verse, right? It's no. this punctuating he, riff. That's right. And he's playing basically either a single string or a pair of strings. Um, and then occasionally he'll hit all three, <laughs> root, fifth, three. Um, and later in the song, he hits this open chord, which has no third. Uh, but yeah, a lot of just uh, pairs of strings. So that's just two strings and then one string, pair of string, pair of string. That's uh, D and G. So he's not playing full pretty, chords. He's so playing pretty a, simple a riff. stuff. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, Dylan, can I ask you, what are, we, what are a few lessons on the site that can help us get started on this tune? Yeah, absolutely. So we should mention to anybody watching it, uh, uh, you can learn the lesson in standard tuning on the site. And then there's also a whole course on alternate tunings where you can learn how to approach because the alternate tuning topic sounds pretty, you know, um, difficult in the beginning, especially. So this is a primer, you know, definitely head to the site, check out the uh, uh, jumping jack flash lesson as well as the alternate tuning um, lesson. But in terms of just developing uh, the technique that, that Brian's talking about, uh, there's a lot of like wh what you might call double stops or dyads and triads being played, right? So we've got uh, double stop lessons on the site as well as uh, uh, chords in the key of. So if you just pick a key and you can learn the different chords that are in that key, and then when you're moving around that key, pretend this is a guitar, you'll be able to actually select pieces of that chord to be able to kind of make your own version. You'll notice the A formality of this you're going to want to be able to do your own kind of formality as well. So Right. And, and I'll just say the short version of, of all these lessons, what they're going to tell you to do is you're going to, you, it basically involves precision with yeah. your right hand. Yeah. Uh, and then you are also as an insurance policy using your left hand to mute the strings. You can use right. your right hand too, but you're muting the ones that you don't want. If you're only trying to play two strings, you can't hit all, all five in this case or all yeah. six. Yeah. Uh, now we have a question, Brian. What does playing an open tuning lend to the song? Does it sound different than in standard, tu in, in standard, or are they the same? No, they're they're not the same. Um, like I said, they it creates a different voicing of the chord to have mm -hmm. the open notes ringing. So like this, this exact voicing is you can't play it in standard tuning. Right. This because of the com combination of open notes and fretted ones, you just you, we just we're, they are not available yeah. in standard tuning. It so the intervals a different are different. Voicing. So the way that you play, uh, whenever you play an open chord, like when you play open E, mm -hmm. you have three of the strings that are fretted and three that are open, and mm -hmm. so that gives that chord a certain character, right? Because of the combination of fretted strings and open strings, it's the same with open tuning. So Gene, as his acoustic was tuned to open E. Minus tuned to open G. Those are both two different voicings, um, and and the way that you can kind of manipulate them by fretting certain right. strings creates new voicings that you can't use in standard tuning. Right. Now For you can play this in standard. I mean, Gene just played it in standard. Like we could point you to the the Johnny Winner live version, right. which mm. is played in B. Um, and it's actually a really good thing to talk about because the same way that that using an open tuning can lead you. Uh, to some different voicings and kind of open up some doors for you trying to play a song like this that was composed and performed in an open tuning trying to play it in standard tuning can similarly open doors for you and, and yeah because you know, gotcha. it kind of forces you to be creative right now yeah, that's a good point. We, i mean i could play a various b flat chords but none of them are the exact same voicings or, or the intervals are, are not the exact same thing that, as what you have, Brian, because you're tuned to that open G. We have a yeah. question from Michael Weider, and then we're going to move on to the chorus. He's watching on YouTube. What part of this song would a, a beginner try to mimic? It's a very advanced song, he says. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I think, that, I think that the best thing to do would probably be to learn the riff itself yeah. because that's like 75% of what's being played <laughs> in the song. Yeah. Uh, if if and, you do and, that, people say, dude, you know Jumpin' Jack Flash. Yeah, exactly. And if you if you use the app, 
and learn, you know, use the, uh, is, tell me again, is the app in standard tuning or is the app? Yeah, the app's tuning? in standard tuning and it's a, a very accessible way to play it too. So it's, it's yeah. based off the power cord at the sixth thread yeah, on the up root running. on sixth thread. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be up and running in no time. Yeah. In fact, yeah. you, once you have the riff, you obviously you have the intro, then you have the verse. The next port is the, uh, is the chorus. Brian, can we hear the chorus? And then we'll talk about it. But it's all Yeah, so you'll notice, the that and then it goes back right back to, it. and it ends in this cool, uh, and that's the only time he's really hitting. Well, it isn't the only time because in the chorus he's playing all five strings. Right, but it's the only time that he hits his one chord, the B flat in this case, all five strings, and it's root fifth root fifth root. So there's no third in that chord. And that's, you know, we had a question earlier. What's the difference? What What is making this sound different? It's an open, open sound. So mm -hmm. the intervals between all those notes are wider. It's not a very dense chord. The intervals are all fourths and fifths. So it creates this very open sound. Yeah. And let, let's talk about the very, I think, the very clever bass part. Uh, rather melodic. Dylan, uh, you've got a bass there. Can you, uh, can you oh, talk yeah. about this bit? You know what? I'll play it first. And, How about that? And, and do you have a backing Ooh. track by any chance? I do. I have. Oh, boy. This <laughs> Wait, did hey, you make boys. this backing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys hear that? Yeah. That's it. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I can't see too good. Is that Bill Wyman over there? Yeah. It's just like oh, him. Man. Oh, man. I gosh. love that. And he we, even threw in a, he threw in some stink face, too. Like yeah, there you was know a what? Skunk, there was a skunk what is it without a little bit of skunk yeah. face? You know, it's got to, you got to make it look like it hurts. <laughs> no, um. <laughs> Dylan's Dil, Dil so funky, his toes jam. That's funky, right. Funky, funky, funky. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just, okay. So, so what, what's, what's he doing there at that beginning of that beautiful run up there? Yeah, man. It's, it's, you know what? It's like, Scale it's tones, the perfect like uh, compliment to what's happening yeah. on the guitar part, isn't it? Because he's like, "Oh, I get to play. You guys are finally not yeah. making a ton of noise." So, <laughs> so we've got. So it's like a little counter melody to what's going on the whole time. But you've got the root, and then you've got basically the fourth, and then the third, and back to the root. And it's he's just playing a, a portion of the scale, but he kind of is like, "Hey, this is my time to shine." The main thing you may notice here is that during the the riff of the song, the bass is just going. Yeah. Which is a highly syncopated part, and it's also not copying the song. So the next time you hear your neighborhood uh, band, you may want, if the bass player's going, <laughs> it's cool, point. but you might call them out and say, hey, throw, listen, throw a flag on the play. Mm, you know? da, 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 yeah. Um, and if you are a bass player and you want to play this riff, that's a great way to approach the song, uh, but if if you have uh, you know the backing track or other guitars to play with, you know the main bass line is actually um, just the one note for a Pretty while. Pretty hip. Now let's talk yeah. about the chord changes here, uh, Brian, in the chorus. Uh, Someone mentioned the circle of fifths when we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, fourths or fifths, they're, they're they're inverse, but yeah, that's it's interesting because the song drones along on the one chord, like mm. I said, for for the majority of the song, uh, but it has this kind of splash of color when it goes to the chorus and we go to our flat third, flat seven, four, one. And we're going backwards. We're going to the left through the circle of fifths. <laughs> That's so, right, exactly. So we have B flat and then, you know, this is, uh, so B flat is our key, right? So this is gonna be, uh, or what's this now? E flat, or no, no, D flat. Should have right. gone with my gut there. D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat. Uh, right. And then if you were to continue, you would hit F, and then you would hit C, and you'd be back to no sharps, no flat. So it's a pretty clever uh, little little trick that they used in there, and it's something that it, for those of you out there who, who compose, uh, moving through the circle of fifths, is it lends itself uh, well to uh, 
to this kind of music and really yeah, functional harmony. Music. It really helped the ear, our ears naturally follow that stuff. So it's a really, yeah. really a great component. You're right. That's a great, that's a great tip. Also, we should mention, I think it is, it's probably Brian Jones playing that little counter melody in the chorus. And you said he, he, he's going up the chords here. <laughs> Whether he jumps into that action or not, and then we hear him a little later do this really. The, after after we repeat this, it, we just kind of fade out on the one chord for quite a while, right? We have all these the things. Re, the re yeah, the re the, that, that we, bass line that Dylan was playing is now being played by the lead guitar. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And and Brian's got this really cool kind of like this uh, Brian Jones that is is playing. It. Which is a, a, a nice reference to their old blues stuff. Sure. That's sort and of Sesame kind of a Street. horn line, sort of and Sesame Street. That's sure, right. Sesame Street. This <laughs> is one of the last things that uh, Brian Jones got yeah. to be a part of for this band. That's right. Now on Facebook, Greg Stimple asks, "What tuning does Ronnie Wood play? The same oh. or different? When, like, hey, say the oh. Stones, uh, like a just an average Stones concert? Keith's an open G." on that Telecaster is called Macabre. Uh, and is is Ronnie in standard or is he also in an open tuning? Brand? You know, it's a good question. And I my my best guess, since I'm not like close personal friends with Ronnie Wood or his guitar <laughs> tech, is that he is probably in standard tuning or I, a different open tuning. Yeah. So that they can create a, a denser texture I would between think the so. two guitars. I would think. I yeah, know that on... Go when Ronnie Wood was in the faces, he would use open G yes. a little bit, but he was the only guitar player. And he was open E. The stone. Go he, ahead. he would use open E as well on Gasoline yeah. Alley by uh, Ross Silver. And also, oh, sure. I think on Stay With Me is the open E tune. I think that's you know? right. Yeah. So, yeah. so he's not... Yeah, it's not that he uh, uh, isn't aware of them, but but you're right, yeah. Brian. The point is he's probably not tuned the same way that Keith is because you're going to want to have... You want to have be able to spread those options out. Right. So the the second guy in the Stones historically has been in standard tuning. Now, That's Ron right. Wood has been in the band the longest of any mm -hmm. of them. Uh, and so I'm sure that they have moments where they are perhaps both in open G. But generally speaking, um, they're going to have one guy in a standard tuning and one guy in an alternate tuning yeah. or different alternate tunings. And one of the one of the previous times you're here, Brian, we did Bad Moon Rising. We had that same thing. There was one guitar that was tuned down a full step. One was standard. So you can get you can spread those 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 rolls out. A final thought here: What makes this song, Brian, to you so memorable from both a yeah. guitar or musical perspective, or just personally? Why is it so cool? Why is it jumping I mean, jack flash? <laughs> well, the, the coolness is is a big part of it. There's everything about this is just cool. Mm -hmm. um, the guitar tone is cool. The we, we've taught we've deconstructed our bass line. It's like everything just reeks of coolness. As I said on my kind of socials today, I was like, when the aliens come down <laughs> and say, you know, give us one good reason we shouldn't just annihilate all of you. You know, what have you contributed? Uh, I would play them this record. This, this is one of the best things. That, one of the best we, shots. Is one yeah. of the best things that, that we have done. You, know, you could play him, Johnny, be good, but but I might want to play this too because this is kind of the logical. It might tell them. It might Johnny tell them not to mess with us too much. I mean, think of the <laughs> yeah. poetry. Think of the poetry though. That that first line of the song. It's basically about Keith Richards. They're all war babies, right? England yeah. being bombed during World War II, and and when Keith was born, it, I mean, London was being bombed. In other words, I was born in a crossfire hurricane. That's yeah, a, it's I a mean, much. It's, it's got a great lyric. It has some kind of. It has those social overtones. It has some religious overtones. Yeah. Um, there is a just a badass maraca. Uh, oh yes, I was going to be yeah. That kids, comes in, uh, at if the, you at the solo, I if mean, you want your tune it. to really really have a just a cool vibe, you would be surprised how a good mar track of maracas yeah, will and actually. It doesn't even He's right, and it's, it doesn't even come in until the solo, and it's it's probably Jimmy Miller, it's probably yeah. the producer playing yeah, I, them, and, and it's like it's introduced just at the um, solo, and it goes through the last verse and the last chorus, but it's not in the first half of the song, um, so that's an arrangement thing it, that makes it cool. I it mean, really the, all it makes that mix jump, about, you know? Yeah, it makes it, it jump. It. Having these the mix of the three guitars. Um, is great you know the outro jumping jack flash it's a gas jumping it's kind of like it, it turns into this kind of mantra that gets mm -hmm. repeated i mean there's nothing that i don't like about this track and obviously you know music is subjective but i just think it's really really a cool contribution we have a shout out from john holman who's watching on youtube says i john. learned what oh what Sorry. was that were you cleaning it and went off yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, no, uh, he's watching on YouTube. He says, I learned so much just listening to you guys for about 10 minutes. Thank you. Well, John, you should know we're insufferable after 15. John, so thank you very, very much. Yeah. Um, let's, let's put this Sweet all together. Uh, since we've investigated the riff, the intro, the verse, the chorus, it's time to put them together. Brian, can you play Jumpin' Jack Glass for us one more time before we move on to the homework? Mm, I was born across by a hurricane. You're right. It's so cool. I couldn't help but jump in even despite Zoom lag. I think lag. it kind of worked, actually. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was very laid back. Very it was stones. It was out of time and laid back. So it was yeah. perfectly good stones. Brian, that was magnificent. Thank you so much. Uh, we're so That's lucky to pleasure. have you on the on the team. So lucky on a day like this. Uh, we're going to move on to the, some homework, though. Dylan, you're the guy. Uh, yes. Okay. So to sign, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, so Brian's performance was excellent and possibly intimidating, but don't be intimidated, <laughs> right? Uh, if you're a beginner, a great way to get started on this is one finger power chords. So literally these guys here, because you're going to, you're going to be able to access this later on in this kind of abridged version. Okay. Uh, full blown power chords. If, if you're a beginner, slightly, maybe a middle beginner, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're intermediate, I think you're ready to take on Jumping Jack Flash as taught on Fender Play. I think you're ready to do it and make it happen. If you're advanced, now take on Jumping Jack Flash, but also learn you can that. Yeah. the uh, <laughs> B flat minor pentatonic scale, and you're going to give your own little your own licks over the top of it, right? So you'll get uh, you get a chance to stretch out yourself. Um, and that's it. That's the homework this week. That's the homework. Awesome. Now let's start giving stuff away. It's the reason they really come in. Let's face I love it. This. Come this on. I know. This is, I right? it's, like Christmas. This is the, it's the meat of the show. Dylan, take it away, buddy. Okay. So before we get to the weekly giveaway, I've got special news for everybody here. This month, we're celebrating four years of Fender Play. Pause for applause. I, I can hear them from here. It's okay, right. folks. Please. I'm trying to give a speech. Anyways, so to, to celebrate, <laughs> we're down. giving away Sit four down. guitars to some lucky learners. We've teamed up with artists like, artists like her. Albert Hammond Jr., uh, Kingfish, Ben Gibbard, and we're giving away their signature guitars. So to enter to win, all you have to do is learn one of their songs using Fender Play. And we kick this off starting tomorrow morning with the release of the Her Collection. So uh, check your emails, check Fender.com, check the lesson descript or the description below, 
And if you're not a Fender Play subscriber, this is the best time to do it because you might actually win a guitar. And of course, it's free uh, to start with. So there's I that would as well. say so. That's very, very cool. Um, yeah, everybody enter up. But I, I, that would that'd be so cool to earn, to get one of those guitars. We can't and, win. Uh, so you guys, yeah, yeah, we're, no, we're jelly. I'm, I'm jealous. I got, yeah, yeah no, we're no, jelly. Yeah, Brian, you're not. Yeah, no, it's I, oh, okay. <laughs> vicariously. I got, I got lots of Fender stuff anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good for you, buddy. All right. Uh, Dylan, what else have you got for us today? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's the weekly giveaway. Um, so every week we talk about it, but I'll just let you know if it's the first time watching the show. We give away, does, we've given away hundreds of, of guitars, amps, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of different stuff that you can pick from if you're, if you're selected. And all you have to do to be selected is be a member of Fender Play and use it for three seven-minute sessions or 21 minutes a week. And you're automatically entered to win. So do you guys want to hear who won this week? We do. Here's, really a, here's a B-flat drum roll. Give me a B-flat. <laughs> JP, J, P, J, P. Way to go, J, P. J, I knew it was going to be J. I knew it. <laughs> you always I, predict I, them. J, P, uh, enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. Congratulations. Dylan, what are the Fender Play updates? So we've got new songs on the site, right? We've got new stuff. We've got Walk on the Wild Side. And darn it, I just put the bass down or I'd play it for you. Uh, oh, yes. There it is. But now on a guitar. the vibe has to be like really and just you know. like two bass lines, really. Yeah, you got, you all should one. relax. You guys need yeah. to relax if you're going to do it. Yeah. I need a beret. Okay. <laughs> and we've got uh, Catfish Blues is on the site now. And one of the things I really want to push uh, anybody that's watching this towards, if you were intimidated at all today, when you're learning with Fender Play on Path, especially Rock Path, uh, you're going to learn the skills that you need that culminate into these songs. So you're n we're not going to leave you hanging on this. And... If you want to supplement your skills, you can always head over to the Skills tab, which is on the left side of your screen when you're using Fender Play, and uh, just look through the theory or through the exercises. So we've got major chords in the key of C, and you can go through and learn basically how, to, how these songs are built, what chords are used in a certain key, as well as uh, a new one is soloing with movable blues, pen, um, blues pentatonic. So... So that's what that's called, folks. When Dylan does that all the time, that's what that's called. That's exactly what it's called. And so it's also the back of my um, car has a big bumper <laughs> sticker. Anyways, uh, so uh, so anyways, you know, don't be scared to go all a cart, to go off path if, if you yeah. want to, and then head back on path when you're ready. The, min the minutes still add up, right, Dylan? That's right. That's, that's right. right. They all count. That's right. All right. Huge thank you to Brian for helping us with our diving Woo! jumping jack flash. I thought you were fantastic. It was really good, great, Brian. Man. Yeah. Now much. we want to hear what you have coming up. Uh, okay, well, you can always go to brianwheelandmusic.com, and I'm I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. I'm pretty easy to find. I have something that's very cool coming up tomorrow. I'm going to be DJing a two-hour set uh, for Gimme Country Radio. So you can oh, go cool. to gimme, gimmecountry.com. You can listen for free on their website, or you can download their app. Um, but it's a really cool website with a lot of great um, – DJs, many of whom are artists who are sidemen or artists wow. or songwriters or singers. And it's 24 hour programming of, um, it says country, but it's a loose definition of country. Sure. So check that out tomorrow at uh, 12 Pacific. I'll be on there. That a crazy wow. hip. I'll be tuning in. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dylan, very, very much for, uh, for bringing thank the you, bass Eugene. and for riffing and assigning homework. And to everybody else out there, thank you for tuning in. Keep safe. Keep practicing. And we'll see you next week at the same time in the same bat channel. Everybody play out on a G chord. Brian, watch yourself. You're tuned open. G. Concert ah. G. One, two, <laughs> three, four. Yeah.